Oh, hello, and welcome to episode 58 of the franchise. I'm your host, Daniel Ehrenberg. And I'm your host, Henry Papali. Welcome, everyone. Today we have a special guest. His name is Jan Martino. Hello, Jan. Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for having me on the podcast. That Our wasn't pleasure. much of an intro. I, I like to say things like, he's a father. He's a, <laughs> you know, he works in a museum. What, what, well, I was, what I was about Jan, can we him. say? I was going to leave that to Jan. What well, about first, your life do you want to plug? <laughs> well, first, I, I got to say, I'm a little pissed off. Maybe not at you guys. Maybe on myself. Um, I should. We should have done this earlier. Listen, man, when, you, uh, when you're young... Uh, you know, you set out goals for your life, and as you get older and all those goals uh, go under, uh, you know, under achieve, you make, we, you make up new ones. So my new goal in life was to be the uh, Jackie Robinson of uh, the franchise. The first <laughs> person of color uh, to, uh, to be a guest on the podcast. And my world was shattered, shattered last week. When I was talking to Jason Harris, our good friend, and he told me that not only am I not the first person of color, I'm not even the first Puerto Rican to be a guest on the show. So let's start with that. That's on me. That's on me. Who was? Just... Isaac. Isaac. Oh, of course. Yeah, Isaac <laughs> Lopez. Yeah. You what? know, what we really need to do is have a lady on the show. This is a fucking sausage fest that I have. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I agree. Mm. Well, anyway, uh, a little bit about myself. I yeah, my name is Jan Martino. I uh, I work in a cultural institution who uh, whose name rhymes with Loma. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I am part of the uh, Barnes and Noble crew, uh, the OG crew of uh, uh, Chelsea. The Chelsea yeah. store before it got close. <laughs> that on, uh, has not come up on this podcast. So you worked with Henry, not with me. Yes, mm. I did. Uh, not only did I work with Henry, but I also uh, lived with Henry for a little while. Yeah. Uh, then I didn't get to uh, to work with you then, but uh, we met through uh, our mutual, our many mutual friends. That's right. Hopefully, one day we'll live together. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. if that happens, that means that my life is not going all that great because that would make me divorce. <laughs> I, <laughs> I am married now to a, a great lady. Her name is Melissa Falkenham. You know, oh, she did not, is her name she not Allison not Duty? Uh -huh. Is her name not Allison Duty? No, it's not. Oh, bummer. Uh, she has more personality than that. Oh. <laughs> We've now had, uh, what, Dan? We've had one of your roommates and one of my roommates on the show now. That's true. <laughs> that is true. Both and they Puerto were both Puerto Rican. Rican. Yeah. <laughs> this world is too small. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, today we're covering Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade and Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Uh, so let's start with Last Crusade from 1989, uh, directed by, he's back, Spielberg, written by Jeffrey Boehm, uh, with a story credit by George Lucas and Menno Mejes. Now, this is from the era which still exists to this day, that st started around this time where Spielberg has like a crew of writers and he only works with those guys. And uh, these were a couple of them. Yeah, yeah. Talk a little bit about Jeffrey Boehm, because I, I realized that this guy, <clears throat> R.I.P., by the way. Oh. Uh, he, yeah, he died very young. Um, he wrote four movies that uh, that I love, and some other stuff that's mediocre, didn't but he, uh, I didn't realize. Well, he wrote Lethal Weapons 2 and 3, which we already covered on the franchise. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Well, my, my four would be Lethal Weapon 2, uh, Funny Farm, and The Dead Zone, and then I don't want to spoil anything for Last Crusade, but obviously I just did. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've talked about him before, so I don't want to get too into it, but sure. I, I mean, yeah, Dead Zone's good, Inner Space is okay, Lost Boys is good, uh, he created The Adventures of Briscoe County Jr., which is pretty fun, and then his last script is for The Phantom. <laughs> oh, 
Ouch. <laughs> with my man Billy Zank. And he also wrote the color purple. And no, I'm that's sorry, no, sorry, not. Sorry. That's I'm Menno Mayes. I'm switching. I'm switching. I, yeah. I switched without saying. He wrote the color purple, and he wrote and directed that. I really like that movie uh, about young Hitler with uh, Noah, what's his face, and John Cusack. You guys know what I'm talking Max, about. Max, that's a piece of shit, man. You like that uh, movie? I like it. I think it's good. Yeah. Did you see it, Jan? No, I haven't seen that one. No one saw that, Jan. Don't feel bad. <laughs> but he also wrote and directed The Dinner, uh, which was remade recently into that Richard Gere flick, which <laughs> yeah. I did see, and which was not very good. But, no, uh, this guy sucks, man. He wrote The Color Purple. You got to give him that. Uh, Minnow Mehis. But, he, I mean, The Siege is a piece of shit. Ricochet is pretty rough. Uh, yeah. A Matador's Mistress. I've always wanted to see that because it appears that Adrian Brody plays a Latino guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that would be interesting. Never heard of it. Yeah, I remember seeing uh, the DVD all the time. Uh, but whatever. This guy, he's a hack, but he only came up with a story for this with <laughs> with my man Lucas. Hank, right. um, should we? <laughs> what was that conversation like? Yeah, Jan, do you mind if we uh, just do a quick improv right now? No, go ahead. Okay. Okay, yeah. let's go. All right. Uh, well, you would be starting there, George. Steven, <laughs> it's it's time to close out the trilogy. Yeah, I, I guess you're right, George. It's about that time. I've been kind of occupied with some other stuff, but, uh, I mean... You know, I, I would ask if you had anything in mind, but I already know you don't. So uh, what? I always have it in mind. It's all planned out. <laughs> so what do you have for the what do you have for the our little finale here, man? Um, we well, you know what my favorite thing is in movies when you have a really cool character, but then you get to see him as a little boy. <laughs> Yeah, uh, okay, who who would we be seeing? Indiana Jones? Indiana Jones, and you get an origin story of how he wears a leather coat and has a whip, and, you know, he's afraid of snakes. And... So you want, you want to explain all that? You don't want to just kind of leave that as part of the mystique of the character? What's that word mean? Uh, it's an X-Men character, George. Don't worry about it. Uh, all right. So, well, this... Uh, I, I don't think we should do Nazis again, though. So, what would be the... Uh, who would be the villains? Hitler. <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, it, in in what sort of... Con what are we looking for? What what do you think uh, he, he would be looking for? I guess probably, probably avoid something religious again, since we already did the Ark of the Covenant, right? Holy Grail. Um... <laughs> Okay, so you want to do uh, an origin story, you do want to keep it religious, and you want to use Nazis. Uh, anything to it that maybe we haven't done that you want to add a character that maybe we haven't done? Indiana Jones, he needs a sidekick, right? Because it worked so well with Short Round. So it'll be his dad. Okay, now that's not a terrible idea. Uh... With a, I think the key thing here would have to be casting. Who do you have in mind for that? Mm, I don't know. I, I hope... Well, what? Well, I was just going to say, you know how I always wanted to, to do a Bond movie, and you talked me out of that uh, to my everlasting regret. So maybe can maybe I at least you throw me a bone here. Maybe can we try to get Sean Connery, see if he's available? He's kind of hot right now. He won the Oscar for The Untouchables. Maybe he'd be interested in something like this. I don't know about that. Why do you want him? Well, he's just has such a great screen presence, and uh, the only problem is he's only about 12 years older than Harrison Ford, so that would be kind of hard to explain, but I guess uh, we could just kind of ignore that. What do you think? Oh, I don't think that matters at all. Oh, okay. Well, then, uh, what do you want to call it? Um, I got an idea. How about Indiana Jones... And the Monkey King! <laughs> yeah, um... 
I'm going to get back to you on the title there, uh, George. I don't know that that's kind of kind of beyond even our silliness. I'll, I'll since it's the what final. What do you mean? <laughs> well, since it's the final one, why don't we think about it? You know, it's absolutely going to be the final one. Uh, why don't we kind of come up with something like you know the last adventure or something like that? You know, the final adventure, something like that. No, the Monkey King. Why? 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 Listen, I've had this planned out for years. Why are you questioning it now? <clears throat> well, George, you know, it's a private conversation. I never told anyone that uh, you didn't have anything really planned. So, I'm gonna, you know, but, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll put our heads together and see what I can come up with, uh, basically. All right? Mm, I'm open to it. And scene. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so that's how Last Crusade came to be. <laughs> Wonderful. For a second, I didn't know if it was uh, George Lucas or Kermit the Frog talking about <laughs> Oh, oh. <laughs> they're similar. They're similar. <laughs> I can see it being confusing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right, so Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade was released May 24th, 1989. Uh, a vastly increased budget of $55 million, but a huge box office of $474.2 million. It was second in box office for the year after Batman. And, uh, you know, the rest is history. That's why we needed a fourth one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, it didn't surprise me that Batman was number one. We covered eighty nine when we did uh, Lethal Weapon two, right, right, mm -hmm. right. But we did we didn't do our top uh, tenors. Do you want to do that before we get into the movie, or do you want to do it after? Oh, we can do that now, sure. Uh, and Jan, you you have a top ten list for nineteen eighty nine, huh? I do, I do have my list. Uh, should I start? You yeah, start num honor. number ten. Okay, uh, <laughs> this is a personal favorite of mine, so I'm not. I was not going to leave it out. Say Anything, uh, like Cameron Crowe. Okay, great movie. Hank? Uh, I, have a, I have one of the few ties, and you, you let oh, me do Oh, this it. is bullshit. You let me do it at the time. I didn't write it in. Uh, it was You Let Me Do It for some reason. I don't like it. You want me to choose right now? No, no, say the two movies. So you can trash one of them. Yep. I know you will. All right. <clears throat> Black Rain. Yeah. And Fabulous Baker Boys. I don't like either one of them. <laughs> oh, you're fucking stupid. <laughs> Fabulous Baker Boys you don't like. Eh. That's the movie where I began to love Jeff Bridges. Okay, it took me a while longer. Okay, my number ten is Back to the Future Part 2. Ah, that's yeah. good. All right, good. Jan, number nine. Uh, Born on the 4th of July. Oh, okay. Ah. Yes, sir. My number nine is another one Dan will hate, maybe Jan too. Uh, sea of Love. No, that one's fine. Uh, <laughs> I like it more than Black Rain. Yeah, me too. <laughs> My number nine is Heathers. Okay. All right. I really like that. What's that, Hank? Never really cared for that movie that much. Oh, now you're just now you want to fight me, huh? <laughs> well, you're being pugilistic. No, okay. no, no. I, I just never got eight. Okay, uh, my eight is Field of Dreams. Ugh, ugh, yeah, Jesus sorry, buddy. Christ. I hate, I hate that movie. Yeah, man, I don't know. It's something about dead people coming back to life and to play baseball that appeals to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a very specific thing, so you must I like enjoy that, that movie. Uh, oh. Well, mine's a baseball movie. Mine's number eight is uh, Major League. Oh, very good. Okay. Mine is The War of the Roses. It's a good choice. A classic. Yeah. Seven? Oh. Okay, my number seven is When when Harry Met Sally. Oh, my. Boy. Yeah, wow. you're, you're very uh, commercial, Jan. I love it. Yes, I am. Okay. <laughs> well, this year has a, a lot of that on here, but, uh, okay, my number seven is not commercial at the time. Uh, Sex, Lies, and Videotape. Okay. My number seven is Hal Hartley's The Unbelievable Truth. What a douche. <laughs> it's an incredible movie. You've never, never seen it. I never even saw it. Of I course. All right, six. 
Okay, uh, my number six is uh, Adventures of Bottom on Chelsea. Oh. Mm. Nice like pronunciation. <laughs> uh, my number six is Glory. Okay. Mine is My Left Foot. All right. Yep. Five. Okay, uh, my number five is Dead Poet Society. Oh, Jesus, Jen. Some of like my least favorite movies on your <laughs> list. <laughs> can you, what can you do? They can all be winners, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Captain, my, my captain. My number five is Drugstore Cowboy. That's my number five. Oh, look at that. Hey, same hey. Hey. Uh, All right, four. <laughs> okay, my number four is Roger and me. Oh, so that's, good. Not on my that's list. Not, not on mine either. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, what's what's yours? Then? My number four is born on the fourth of July. All right. Mine is Jim Jarmusch's Mystery Train. Fuck's sake. Yeah. And I forgot that that was that would probably be on my top ten too. I forgot that that it existed. Oh. But I liked it a lot. Great movie. Yeah. Number three. Uh, my number. Th- Three is crimes and misdemeanors. Very good. Hey. My number, th- my number three is do the right thing. Okay, that's uh, my favorite movie of all time. So definitely, it's the <laughs> third best movie of 1989. All right, uh, my number three is Sex, Lies, and Videotape. All right, number two, Jan. Uh, my number two is do the right thing. Ugh. All right, should be number one on all these lists. All yeah, right, whatever. Hank. My number two is Crimes and Misdemeanors. Mine as well. Oh, all right. Number, number one, one movie of best movie of '89. And it's still one of my favorite films of all time. And it's cheesy and sappy, and I love it. I love cheese. Uh, Cinema Paradiso. Oh no, that's a good movie. I thought you were gonna say like fucking beaches or something. <laughs> no nah, man, come on, give me a little bit more credit, man. Yeah. <laughs> I never saw uh, Cinema Paradiso. Oh, it's worth watching. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. My number one movie of 1989 is My Left Foot. Wow. Interesting. I wouldn't have predicted yeah. that. All right. Mine yeah. is, of course, Do the Right Thing. And the one that surprised me that I didn't have on here, uh, I don't know. I must have been in a really like hyper Nolan y phase, but I, I didn't, none of us put it on, uh, which was the first Batman. Oh, I'm it's fine a- with that. It's in my honorable mention. I put Batman, Glory, uh, My Left Foot, and Drugstore Cowboy. There you oh, go. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Bo- I love Born on the Fourth of July. That didn't quite make it. I love Roger and Me. That didn't quite make it. But I'm very happy with my top ten for that year. Yeah, Roger and Me should have been on my list. Uh, Black Rain is obviously a personal favorite, and uh, as is Sea of Love, because because Roger and Me should 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 be on there, but. The Oscars felt it okay to reward Indiana Jones in The Last Crusade. Yeah, would they get, like, sound or something? They won Best Sound Editing, uh, and they were nominated for two other awards, Best Sound, which it lost to Glory, because um, the Oscars think that every year the sound award has to go to a war movie. (laughs) And uh, Best Score, Hank, it was nominated. That's funny. And lost to The Little Mermaid. Oh my god! How about that? <laughs> That's sad because honestly, I right off the top of my head, one of the memorable things about Glory is its score, which is fantastic. And for for Last Crusade to get one, he he didn't do any. He had one new theme. He had like a big new Nazi theme, which was very cool. But, oh, uh, the fucking Nazi theme sounds exactly like <laughs> the Empire theme in Star Wars. Oh, you're coming around. To, I to- I. <laughs> I kept thinking it was going to bust into the fucking dark side. So did I. Yeah. So did I. Well, what he, you know, those are stormtroopers and these are actual stormtroopers. So he just decided to, uh, you know, flip the tones a little bit. But uh, I thought it was good. But uh, you're absolutely right. And you're not going to get me here defending him too much. We've talked so much about John Williams. But uh, All right, Jan, walk us through the plot of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Okay. So I haven't watch this uh movies in a long time especially uh uh the third one the one that we're doing right now uh i found myself in a position that i had to really suspend my disbelief 
And if you live by a moral code, throw it out. It doesn't apply to any of these films. <laughs> now, uh, the movie starts with an origin story of, of sorts. Uh, we see uh, uh, we were Phoenix played young Indiana Jones, and he's a, uh, a Boy Scout. And, you know, he starts, uh, uh, he, uh, he starts searching for things that he shouldn't do, and he runs into these uh, treasure hunters that, are, that found, like, some sort of cross, the cross of Coronado or something like that. Uh, well, in this 12-minute sequence, we learn everything we need to learn about India, Indiana Jones in the future. We know how he develops his phobia for snakes, uh, the scar that is under his lip, we know how he got it, uh, his affinity for the whip, um, and uh, in a really weird, I, I just don't know how to describe this, so the <laughs> treasure hunt, he mirrors himself as, after the treasure hunter, who uh, inexplicably looks and sounds exactly like him in the future. <laughs> I mean, I didn't get it, but they went with it who am I to question? And he gave him his hat. He gave him his hat at the end. So we cut to the guy saying something like, oh, you know, you don't, you lost today, but you don't have to like it. Cut. And it's Indiana Jones in 1938. And wait, wait, hang on, hang on. I've got to say my piece on this prologue. Okay. Well, why don't we just, okay, yeah. Now we could do a plot through the, yeah, go ahead. Go I ahead. haven't seen this movie since I was, you know, probably 10 years old. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, uh, this was crazy. <laughs> I, I, we're in Utah, 1912. I, he manages to fall into a snake pit, find a whip, uh, you know, in a lion tamer. He, he's on this fucking train that's like a zoo train. <laughs> and there's a snake and a, and a lion... And he's got to use a whip, and this guy... Okay, this guy is the worst offender of them all. He meets this weirdo treasure hunter uh, with a leather jacket and a hat and, uh, you know, whatever else. He's wearing khakis. And <laughs> fucking... It, to me, it makes Indiana Jones the saddest character of all time. Because... <laughs> Who sees some motherfucker when they're like 13 years old and then models the rest of their entire lives after him down to what you wear? Uh, made, a big, made a big impression. Yeah, it's 1912. He didn't have a father figure, you know, to look up to. So, I mean... Uh... So this guy who he meets once... Once. We, he knows nothing about this guy. He could be a fucking child rapist as far as we know. <laughs> he he just, like, takes his hat, and that's what he wears for the rest of his life. It, to me, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is especially bummery now because now we've got this, like, 70-year-old Indiana Jones who's still like, don't I look cool like that guy I saw that one time? <laughs> Listen, he, he, the guy did give him the hat, so that counts for something. I don't know, man. It's a nice hat. Yeah, man. it is a nice hat. Yeah. But what about know. all this other shit, man? He falls into a snake pit immediately. It's like, oh, snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? And then, like, it, 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 he finds the whip, and that's just, oh, this will be my weapon of choice. It's fucking <laughs> insane. <laughs> yeah, well, and I got... Like, nothing ever happened to him. Sequence. Nothing ever happened to him ever again. This is just, like, the only day in his life that ever mattered. The, yeah, the, the only 12 minutes of his life yeah, that only mattered. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly. Well, listen, I started by saying you have to suspend your disbelief, and this is part of it. This I'm is, not I suspending. Mean, I mean, you're not suspending. You're not accepting. No, this is a bridge yeah. too far, guys. Oh, it, wow. This is too far. No, I think we're going to get further than that, uh, especially discussing the fourth one. But anyway, yeah, yeah all it that. Did, it didn't bother me, Dan. It really didn't. I, I mean, I, I, I hadn't seen this movie in a very, very long time. Obviously, since I'd, I'd seen it, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 years ago. But uh, I didn't, didn't mind it. I mean, it was short, 
which is why I liked it. I it's didn't not need it short. To be... Oh, it's twelve minutes. It, it was fine. Listen, I, I, I... we Raiders of the Lost Ark was a family film, a, the kind of movie anyone can enjoy, like a Pixar movie. All right. I don't know if I'd go yeah. that far. What do you mean? With Nazis in it. There's melting faces and brutal violence. I don't know about family picture, but... Uh, okay. Everyone can enjoy Raiders of the Lost Ark. Stop being such a fucking snowflake. Well, <laughs> I saw it when I was a kid. It didn't traumatize me, but I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I, uh, you know. Okay, go, go ahead. All right, then Temple of the Doom. Temple of the Doom. Temple of the Doom. <laughs> yeah, it's a little too adult. You know, yeah. it, it like it, it gets dark. I understand why like Lucas and Spielberg were uncomfortable with it and wanted to like redirect their energies in the third one. But they redirected far too much. I'm watching a fucking kids movie here. Well, I that I'm you actually said something I was going to get to way at the end, but uh, I agree I agree with that. Um I agree with that. They 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 did a a total <clears throat> 180 and and it's like it's it's too uh, family friendly to me. It, it's just too goofy. It's not uh, family friendly because adults just, can't enjoy this movie. This is a movie for uh, fucking babies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know you were going to come on so strong here because I, I I remember a conversation that we had many years ago. Um, and now I, I could take it with a grain of salt because I didn't know at the time and you didn't reveal to me that you hadn't seen Crusade since you were fucking 10. <laughs> but I remember telling you that I, uh, I ranked these movies uh, Raiders, then D Temple, then Crusade. And you said, no, no, Raiders, Crusade, then Temple. Yep, I used to feel that way because I watched them when I was fucking 10 and that's when you have to watch this movie. Okay, all right. Uh, what, else, what happens... Uh, the... <laughs> okay, so uh, cut to 1938. Uh, Indiana Jones is still looking for this cross that he was. Uh, they took it away from him and gave it to the rightful owner, the guy who found it, and the guy who found it sold it. So he tracks it down to the guy who bought it, who is this handicapped person uh, who, <laughs> who who owns the ship, and apparently for so for no fucking reason. He carry, he still carries the uh, the the cross around uh, even th uh, 20, 30 years later. He still has it. It's not in a museum. It's not in a case inside the house. No, it's in a crummy uh, boat in the middle of the ocean. So, but basically, uh, Indiana Jones retrieves the the uh, the steals the the cross from its owner, kills them all. He jumps uh, <laughs> jumps to the ocean. In the middle of the ocean, and somehow he survives because he holds on to a buoy or some shit like that. Uh, and he's being uh, he goes back to uh, America and he's being congratulated. And the uh, 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 the uh, the cross is going to be uh, displayed in the museum uh, where he works. He's a professor, of course. Uh, anyway, uh, he encounters this guy Walter Donovan who is a philanthropist, I would say, and a collector. And he explains to Dr. Jones that, uh, that uh, he's trying to find the, the, uh, the Holy Grail and that he, there's an expedition on, a, on the way, but it got derailed because the guy who was uh, in charge of it was kidnapped. And, of course, the guy that was kidnapped was Indiana Jones' father. Um, Sean Connery. John Connery, uh, who plays Indiana Jones' father. So then, of course, Indiana Jones uh, goes to Venice because that's the the last pl place that they that they saw or that that the, that Sean Connery was at. Yeah, and, uh, creative <laughs> film establishing shot of gondolas. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> he even says as he st uh, steps uh, off a of ga uh, gondola, he says, "Oh, Venice, like beautiful." You know? He says that yeah. twice. <laughs> it's yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. So uh, he goes to what happened? So he meets he meets up with a uh, an Austrian colleague called Dr. Elsa Schneider. And is that he, duty? Yeah, that's duty. That's uh, that's Elsa. <laughs> <laughs> hang on, hang on. It's at this point we have to acknowledge that there's an actress in this movie named Allison Duty. You're such a child. Come on. <laughs> well, yeah. you know. 
She's when actually, was, you know what's interesting? She's actually Irish. So, uh, uh, impressive. We never speak about uh, actors doing accents uh, who aren't American, but uh, I was impressed with her uh, German accent being an Irishman. It's Irish true. Uh, yeah, Alison Duty is her stage name. Her, her Irish name is Alison Scheit. <laughs> Alison O'Duty. Yeah. <laughs> all right, anyway, go on. So... Uh, he, we, he oh, by the way, we can make we can make all the ethnic jokes we want because we have a Puerto Rican, an Irishman, and a Jew on this on this show, so it all works. Yeah, so you, yeah, we, we got the the stamp of approval. It, 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 it's all good. Yeah, we, we can't make can make jokes about black people. Okay, no, but, uh, no. we're not covered there. Not but, yet. Uh, not yet. Not yet. That's that's the the next call of barrier that you guys need. To... <laughs> anyway, uh, so. Indiana Jones uh, teams up with Elsa, and they go looking for uh, Indiana Jones' father, and he was last seen at some library that used to be a convent or a church or something like that. So uh, he has a part of a, a, a tablet that, uh, and he, that, that it's, it, it's incomplete, and he's, it's like a, a clue or, or a map. To where the, uh, the, uh, the, the Holy Grail is located. Anyway. Yeah, it's a uh, dumb library scene with some dumb old guy. It yeah. sucks. God, they this break, is harsh. They break the floor. They go to the catacombs. They find, they find uh, the, uh, I guess they were looking for the knight. One of the knights uh, from the, uh, that was uh, were guarding the, uh, the Holy Grail. And he desecrates his tomb, which is something that, that Indiana Jones a lot. The guy <laughs> does not care for, for the dead. No respect whatsoever. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. He just, there's like a skeletons down there, and he's just like kicking them aside. <laughs> you know, he takes uh, a, an arm from one of them and makes a, a torch out yeah, of it. Yeah, that's right. That bone <laughs> torch, that was fucking insane. Well, anyway, uh, so they find the knight. Uh, he makes a copy of the uh, the other part of the uh, uh, the uh, what do you call it? the uh, the tablet, uh, and they are attacked. What I thought at first it was by Nazis, but it's some guy, some brotherhood that protects the Grail, and he, they got it, they get into a fight, and there's a big chase on a boat, and all these people that were. You know, honestly, trying to protect uh, the Grail, they die because of uh, Indiana Jones. And Indiana Jones escapes. And I never they really thought about up. that. Yeah. And they, they, yeah no, no, no. Indiana Jones kills a lot of innocent people throughout the world. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there's no accountability. Dr. Jones never, never uh, spent a single day in a real prison. So, no, you know, he, he never once cares. They're they're no. just villains to him. Well, in it's this bad. in this way and in this movie, that's where he he's there, you can kind of see there's a little bit of James Bond going on. You know, we got a boat chase. We've got the women still. We, we but this time it's really a femme fatale. We've got the the villains who aren't really villains. We've got uh, indiscriminate killing, and mm -hmm. we've got arrogance about that killing. Yeah, so. he 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 banged yeah. duty. Yeah, <laughs> they they call that a Cleveland steamer. <laughs> yeah, he did. Uh, uh, later, we find out that that him and his dad are actually Eskimo brothers because they, they are. Both, yeah, they both fuck duty. Yeah, uh, Indiana Jones totally gets his dad sloppy seconds in this movie. <laughs> well, that is pretty sad. <laughs> Anyway, they eventually they find the dad. He's being kept hostage in a castle by Nazis. And while they are rescuing him, uh, the, tur the tables are turned and Elsa is revealed to be uh, a Nazi, uh, a villain. Uh, she was playing them all along. Yeah, Nazis. Uh, Why did it have to be Nazis? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then uh, also this guy... Uh, the, the guy who actually sent them there, Walter Donovan, he's also a Nazi sympathizer, uh, and he just wants the grail. So he's revealed to be a villain as well. Um, 
Then somehow they escape, they get into a, a, a motorcycle chase, a lot of, pe- a, a lot of Nazis were killed. Uh, <laughs> that's okay. And that's, that's fine with me, I'm not, not, <laughs> not complaining at all. Um, then what happened? So they decide, oh, uh, they had a book, the, the uh, Indiana Jones father had a, ha- has a book. With all the notes that he's taken over uh, over the years of Grail stuff, uh, and they lose it, uh, it's stolen from them. So they want to retrieve the, the book. So instead of going back to Venice, they go to Berlin. And this is listen. This is where for me it got really fucked up because they go to a book burning in Berlin, and <laughs> a delightful Adolf Hitler makes a cameo uh, as a comic group. <laughs> I, he, I loved this. So, so did when, I. So okay. Did I. When you start using Hitler as a comic relief, man, I think that you, you've gone too far with that. Listen, um, I, this I just, was so weird. I, I, it, it, was, it was honestly very Forrest Gump. Like, yeah. Indiana Jones just finds himself at this Hitler rally and gets Hitler's autograph. I thought it was funny. <laughs> No, it was funny, uh, but at the same time, it was kind of fucked up. Henry, I have a movie recommendation for you. What's that? The Boss Baby. Why why is that? I think you'll find it funny. Fuck you. (laughs) Fuck Hugh. 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 Classic. I was not expecting this from you guys. Wow. I fully expected to come into this podcast being the absolutely least enthusiastic uh, supporter of this movie. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very surprised. I mean, we didn't get to our full opinions yet, but uh, I can kind of tell where this is going, and I'm very surprised. <laughs> oh, listen, I'm going with it. Like I, I told you guys uh, when we first started, suspend your disbelief. I'm going with it. Uh, it did not age as well as I remember for me, but, you know, I'm going with it. Uh, I'm still being entertained. It's I still find it funny. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a couple of chases like uh, like in every Indiana Jones movie. They're well made. There's one with tanks and. I horse. like that chase. That was cool. Yeah, it was a cool uh, chase, and I love horses. So the fact that you know he's on a <laughs> horse against a tank. It's uh, it was really appealing to me. When you're trying to say positive things about a movie and you very quickly end up at "I love horses," <laughs> that's probably not a good thing. <laughs> oh, you know, I was really happy that they used horses in the movie. I don't know, it was different. Um, I I liked the part in that chase scene where Sean Connery Sully Sullenberger's that plane. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a Nazi plane, and he like kills it with some birds. <laughs> well, not before when they, this is what I mean. They're going against two or three Nazi planes, right? And they do not get hit. They don't get hit at all. He he does the shooting, and he takes them down by by uh, by uh, by shooting at the at the tail of, of of his own plane, and they go down, and then he kills them with the birds. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, the fact that, that no one, not even the Nazis, can sh- shoot straight in any of these films. It's beyond me, but it is what it is. No one, so, no one hits anything with bullets in these movies. <laughs> Indiana <laughs> Jones, like he's constantly just running into the fire of bullets with like no other thought because he knows them. Like what's worse than the fact that the Nazis don't hit anything with their bullets is the fact that the characters they're shooting at. No, they won't get hit. No one is ever worried about getting shot in these movies. <laughs> no, and he's not carrying a shield or anything. He's very confident, you know, running around uh, in the sea of bullets, that knowing that he's not going to get hit. You're, you're right. No, the only, uh, the only reason he's not carrying a shield is because he didn't find a shield on that zoo train that one day. <laughs> <laughs> Point taken. Fair enough. Uh, maybe so he'll maybe he'll unearth Captain America's uh, shield at some point. You know that would be something. Oh, well, that's for number five because right. they're, they're making number five. Right. Uh, anyway, so what happens? So yeah, they 
So he kills more Nazis with a tank. Uh, there's a main Nazi that uh, falls off a cliff. Uh, pretty cool death because you can see him rolling uh, uh, on the ground as, as, as the tank hits the, uh, uh, the ground. Yeah, but I hated that shot of him flying into the camera. I thought that was terrible. Uh, I was kind of okay with that. I hated yeah, that. There, there was a lot of that shit in this movie, and, and, and I blame Spielberg's direction, obviously. I, I didn't care for a lot of that. That's what contributed for me to some of the just utter goofiness that went went past anything that we had seen prior. You know. But anyway, yeah. I, dig, I digress. Yeah. We're, almost, we're almost at the grail, I guess, right? Yeah, the surviving Nazis get to the grail. Uh, they don't know uh, how to get through the booby traps because there's three booby traps that the uh, that the knights build, I guess. Uh, and of course, Indiana Jones and his father are the ones who know the secret of how to beat them. Uh, in in that same sequence, uh, to force Indiana Jones to go in and get the Grail, uh, the bad guy, what's his name again, Donovan, he shoots. Uh, Indiana Jones' father, uh, and, you know, now he's trying to save his dad, and he has to get the grail. He does. He goes through the booty traps. Uh, uh, some of them clever, some of them not as much. Uh, and he meets the knight. Now, these people follow him, uh, both Elsa and Donovan. And even though Donovan, when, when we see him uh, at the grail site, he's using basically slaves to do his bidding and and you know try to retrieve the uh, the grail for him, uh, <laughs> he decides to try out the first grail that they pick. Because if, if you choose the, the wrong grail, you die. If you choose the right grail, you live. And and the and the, the, the room is full of grails. So she she, pick, she I think she intentionally picks the wrong one. No, no, she does because she gives Indiana Jones a look. Yeah, right. Would you try it first, knowing if she's wrong, you die. Well, I mean, he's a you know he's a fucking megalomaniacal Nazi nutcase, so he probably doesn't think too much. I, I, I mean, mean, it's 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 just so we can get that sweet special effects shot of him like melting. It's it, and it's worthwhile because it's great. It doesn't make and a lot and of the best and one of the best lines in the movie, uh, which is uh, he did he chose. Holy. Yeah, <laughs> that's the classic line that everyone remembers. Um, so then, uh, you know, Indy's just left there with Donovan's number two, Elsa. Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> Beauty. Uh, <laughs> and uh, oh, <laughs> he chooses correctly. He gets that grail right. and saves his father. He chose wisely, yeah. Right, 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 wisely, of course. And then Duty dies by trying to get the grail because she broke the seal. And yeah, the, she gets flushed. Like, yeah, he dies, she dies, and <laughs> they're not too heartbroken over it, to be honest. Uh, she dies, and they move on, and then they ride into the sunset, the four of them. and it's, Literally. Uh, Literally. Yes. yes. Beautiful, friendship, hooray, the end. So that well is well done, Jan. Uh, that was a very comprehensive plot description. That was it was. Good. It was. Um, I mean, look, it, it, there's lots of God talk at the end there with bother, which bothered me. It's very Da Vinci Code. Um, yeah. <laughs> Indy is still a skeptic. Yeah, yeah of uh, course he is. Is he? I think he's obsessed with Jesus, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, the guy has still, to... He still doesn't believe in any of this stuff. I mean. We talked about it last week, and it'll come up again today in the next in the next movie too. But he still is referring to this stuff like it's uh, folklore, myth, folklore. Yeah. I Jesus, mean, what, why did it have to be Jesus? Right. What what more <laughs> evidence does this man need in this universe that there are supernatural things happening? I I, I don't. It's confusing. I, I don't know. Yeah, he's worse than Scully. <laughs> you mean as a skeptic? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I did like the, uh, there's a little uh, arc, uh, there's a little Raiders reference uh, when they're in the catacombs, uh, him and Duty, and they pass a, a mural that has the Ark of the Covenant, and yeah. you hear the, the music cue, and she goes, he goes, she goes, what's that? And he goes, that's the Ark of the Covenant. And she goes, are you sure? He goes, pretty sure. <laughs> I like that. Classic oh, yeah, yeah. gag. 
That, yeah, that was, but that was fun. I mean, I still think that this, the, the, the movie for me, listen, it doesn't hold up with time. And I, and I don't, and, and the same happened. The only one for me that it saved is Raiders because that's a masterpiece. It is what it is. It's, you know, family action adventure film. And you have Nazis as villains and you throw in some God stuff and everyone loves that. Okay. <laughs> Two... Man, I, I just I had a lot of issues with number with uh, with uh, Temple of Doom, especially how they use you know everything when when they when they use other other cultures in American films, and they're there just to provide a comic relief, and not because they're funny, it's because they have an accent and that makes them funny, and I you know I'm you know my English is my second language, I'm a Spanish speaker. And I get really upset when I see that, and, and this is, listen, not only American writers do this, Latino writers do this as well. Mm. If you want to be funny while Spanish or Latino, all you have to do is speak Spanish in an accent. Ay, Dios mío! And you know, <laughs> laugh track. You know, right, it's, right. So it, and, and, and I, per, I felt like that way with short round. The, the fact that they name him after a fucking dog, I mean, it's so, it, 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 it's so insulting, it's so cliche. Might as well, listen, might as well name him Karate Ching Chong. Why not? If you're going to the extreme <laughs> of being a stereotype, then go with it. I mean, and, and also, these guys are obsessed with the, with the, the naming characters after dogs. Come on. <laughs> Even in the fourth one, in Crystal Skull, the kid's name is Mutt. I know. I mean, and I think it's because Bastard's son was too much on the nose. <laughs> so let's name it Mutt. Come on. Let's get over this. And I get it. It's the 80s. And, you know, the world wasn't as PC. But, and, and this is what I find funny of, of today's world and today's Hollywood. You know, Republicans and conservatives, they say, oh, the liberal Hollywood... Everything is so PC. Is it? Oh, are, are, are they writing good characters for people of color? I mean, I have a cousin. He's an actor, Rafael Sardina, who actually, he has worked with Spielberg in War of the Worlds. Oh, and, right. I remember that. He has a little a little scene in that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, he's like the mute uh, uh, <laughs> mechanic assistant because, he, you know, it was too much for Tom Cruise to have a Puerto Rican friend that actually oh. had the movie. Yeah, he get, he gets, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, he gets incinerated by the, uh, the aliens, right? He he does, and he you know he worked uh, in the movie for like a week, and it was a great experience. And he worked with Spielberg, and he saw that uh, this immense sets. I mean, the the guy they know what they're doing. However, Hollywood nowadays they still listen. If you're Latino. You're, but the probability that you're going to be cast as a criminal, a drug lord, a soldier, a cop, a custodial uh, person, that's it. That's what we are. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and also, Jan, I wanted to mention, your cousin uh, blew me away in, a, in the movie The Brave One. Uh, you've seen that, right, Dan? Yeah. Yeah, his cousin is one of the three uh, thugs who beats up Jodie Foster and her husband. Yeah, he's the one that gets that gets shot in the eye. Like yeah. he's the leader of the of the gang. But again, cast yeah, that's what that's why I brought it up. Yeah, cast as a criminal. And listen, Charles, you met him, Henry. Oh, one yeah, of the I know. Sweetest, one of the sweetest people alive. And he's been doing this for twenty years. And he's done TV. And he's done uh, movies. And he gets cast exclusively as a criminal. One time. He, got, he did one of the CSIs or Law and Orders, one of those shows, and he got cast as a doctor. Who kills his patients, man? <laughs> <laughs> another, another one, he did a CSI Miami. Miami, so we're in Florida, where, where they have a law that's called Stand Your Ground. He is being attacked by a gang. He takes out a gun. He shoots to protect himself and his dad, and the bullet ricochets and kills an innocent bystander, a white lady. 
he <laughs> went to jail. He didn't. Nice. He stood his ground, and he still still went to jail. So it's like it, it's this pattern of doing, you know. And it, so when when the when conservatives say, "Oh, Hollywood is too liberal," yeah, there's some truth to that, but they they're not that great. They're not that liberal, but not they're not that they're PC, that PC. They're still doing the same shit that they did before. All right. I like it. Now as Jan steps down from his soapbox, we will <laughs> <laughs> we will start Indiana Jones. I love No, wait, it. wait, wait. No, I liked it too. I love it. What's uh what are you guys grading this movie? Oh, we're done? Yeah. We didn't even talk about Sean Connery. Can we, oh, we gotta sure. talk about him briefly? Um my L V P Sean Connery. You're fucking nuts. I thought he was great. I loved him. He's a and fucking I'll, clown shoe in this movie. I'll He's, tell you why. I think because I'm a lifelong Sean Connery fan, and he never up to this point, and I don't know really ever since, ever played this type of role. He's always the fucking cool, suave, leading man, and it was kind of nice, and he was very convincing in like a nerdy role, and I thought the sequence in the uh, Nazi blimp, when, when he wants to, when Indiana Jones wants to talk to him, and he goes, okay, let's talk. <laughs> and he just like st- stares at him. I-, I I loved it. I thought he was great. He's my MVP. I didn't see it as nerdy. I saw it as utterly incompetent for the entire movie. I- well, he's not. He's not an uh, adventurer though. He's a bookworm. So he's a new- you, you got you guys said that he's only what twelve years older than Harrison Ford in real life, and he looked like like Harrison Ford, Ford's father. I mean, I I believe it. Yeah, he's my MVP too. He's my MVP. Really? Okay. Yeah. I don't know. It, it's comic relief that I... I mean, he might as well have been short round in this movie. Oh, come on. No way. I, I didn't see it. I, and I thought it made Harrison Ford worse. Like, because Harrison Ford was supposed to play all these silly comedy beats in the midst of all of this. I, I, I don't know, man. And and it's also just another fucking Spielberg movie about daddy issues. I'm sick of it. <laughs> well, at least there's no kids in it, man. Yeah, <laughs> you know? that- Maybe that's why I liked it more. Yeah. There is a kid in it, young Indiana Jones. Oh yeah. yeah. Ooh, by the he, way, by the, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just gonna say, uh, nerd alert. Uh, I realized that this is River Phoenix played Harrison Ford's son in the Mosquito Coast. Oh yes. Uh, apparently, Harrison Ford got him this role. Ah, there, yeah. there you go. Because he liked there working with him in the Mosquito Coast. R.I.P. <laughs> R.I.P. River Phoenix, yeah. It's true. So, all right, so fine. So, MVP for Jan and I is Connery. Who's yours? Uh, Duty. <laughs> I liked Duty. I thought she was pretty good. I liked her, too. Yeah. And I have a very clear uh, LVP here. Uh, who's that? Well, it's going to be Spielberg because... I really did find a lot of the direction to be very distracting. Uh, I, I think he was trying too hard on the uh, on the family side, the goofy side, the, the, and and it, it just it some of the some of it bothered me. I was going to give it to the writer Jeffrey Boehm because I thought the concept of the Holy Grail was a, an excellent one for an Indiana Jones film, but I think he just kind of blew it. Uh, it, it, it's just there's too many things happening when it, it could have been a little more substantive and uh, so but uh, I, yeah. I, I, I think it's more Spielberg's fault I, I, he he specifically said he wanted to make Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade to apologize for Temple of Doom right which I don't care yeah. for and you don't need to apologize for that movie that movie's good like I, I, I don't know it's a bummer it, it's just a fucking kids movie I never need to see it again so who's your uh, uh, LVP, you guys? Connery, I said. Oh, that's right. And what about you, Jan? Um, I'm gonna give it to George Lucas. It's all it's all <laughs> Lucas. Fault. What? Not me. <laughs> Even over Spielberg, I still think that George Lucas, after Star Wars, became a mediocre storyteller. Yeah. So every time I see story by George Lucas, I'm expecting the worst. But Good didn't idea. you see Howard the Duck? <laughs> Which, so you guys would agree that uh, Sean Connery's repeated line in this movie, this is intolerable. Uh, that's how you felt about uh, this movie? Or yeah. what? What are we go? So we're going with the star rating now, drum roll. What All are right. we going? What do you got, Hank? 
You, know, you guys really, you guys really threw me for a loop here because when I started watching it, I was prepared ahead of time to go with four, but uh, when I finished, I, I'm going to give it three, but I'm going to give it a strong three because it was still, uh, despite all the shit we're talking, it was still fun. It's still entertaining. Uh, it's a, it's a three star, but it's a three star movie. I, I can't, I can't really go above three. Okay, I give it a three two. And actually, I uh, I also gave uh, the uh, Temple of Doom a, a three because even though I have problems with both films, they they both entertain me, and right. they they don't they know how to handle action. Harrison Ford not, knows how to do it. George Lucas he used to know how to do it, and still <laughs> he, he knows how to uh, direct action. So three for me as well. What about you, buddy? Two. Oh, wow. 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 One of the most surprising uh, star ratings so far for me. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I wasn't. I just was fully not expecting that. I mean, now I am, but I wasn't when we started. Mm -hmm. uh, real quick, I'll do the supers and we'll move on. I only got two. Okay. Superhero count. <clears throat> There's an actor in here who I don't think ever appeared, but he's credited as young Henry Jones junior meaning sean connery sean connery's character as a younger man who you only see his fucking hands yeah so that's probably what it is it's that silhouette show. yeah but I, okay so he was played by an actor named alex hyde white who was in the 1994 fantastic four movie oh the roger corman one yeah played reed richards <laughs> holy shit that's insane isn't that crazy <laughs> yeah and then of course the biggest one which i think both of you could probably guess but uh Sean Connery. The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen? That's right. Yeah. Alan Quartermain. Right. His last movie, actually. So yeah, the movie he hated so much that he decided to never work again. Which I respect. Me too. I love when actors do that. Gene Hackman, go for it. I don't want to see a. any more fucking moose ports. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Well, I mean, Jesus, we're cutting forward to 2008 here. We should say that in the years between, George Lucas commandeered a television show called The Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. Go for it. I mean, I've never really seen it. Harrison Ford appeared on it once, like in a cameo. But, like, I don't know a lot about it. There were, like, two seasons, and it sounds kind of interesting. It's, it's these... Adventures. I think it takes place in like 1917, 1918, around that point. Um, I'd be interested in watching it. There's only like 30 episodes or something, but I mean, it's probably bad, right? I, I don't know interested. anything about it. I remember when it was on, but I had no interest at the time, and I continue to not have interest. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I do like I do like your 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 brief synopsis when you said, you know, he goes on it probably goes on adventures. <laughs> <laughs> well that's it's, it's probably a, a good call it's probably a different thing go. i i looked at it and it's like every episode title is like a country and a year oh, okay. so it's like you know episode six you know iran 1917 <laughs> i don't know if he goes to iran I'm sure but he does. um but that was that show. So that was the last we see of Indiana Jones for a while. And then uh, in 2008, we get Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Spielberg's back to direct. Uh, story credits to Ju uh, George Lucas and Jeff Nathanson. And it's written by Spielberg favorite David Kep, who Yeah, do you, you guys want to talk a little bit about him? I mean, he's a guy that doesn't have a... You know, I mean, it's hard. It's hard to talk about David Kep. He's a for hire guy. Of course, yeah. he has. He's really talented. He he knows how to work the Hollywood system. You know, and uh, so he's written a lot of really really big movies, and some of them are great, and some of them are terrible. I mean, you can't shit on the guy too much. He wrote Jurassic Park, and like he wrote he wrote Panic Room. He wrote Spider Man, uh, and he wrote one of your favorite movies of all fucking time he wrote uh, snake eyes <laughs> that's true he is the man that wrote snake eyes Ugh. i have to give him forever credit for that and he wrote war we yeah, have war like you said war of the worlds and, and a lot of that uh, other stuff 
And he's directed a few movies, right? He um, and yeah, not not good ones at all. That's not true. Uh, Stir of Echoes and Secret Window are terrible. I like Stir of Echoes. That's where we're diverging here. I see. Um, you, guys, you guys gave me shit over Dead Poets Society. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Stir of Echoes is better than Dead Poets Society. Yeah, sure. Um, actually, actually, he directed Premium Rush, which I actually liked. I didn't see that. I saw Ghost Town, which was kind of watchable, but not that great, uh, with Ricky Gervais. But, I mean, the last movie, I don't think he'll ever direct again, because the last movie he directed was fucking Mordecai, which tanked so horribly. <laughs> He's actually sort of on a rough streak right now, because his last movie he directed was Mordecai, and the last two movies he wrote were Inferno. Uh, which kind of didn't do well, the, the Da Vinci Code movie, and uh, The Mummy, which really tanked and was supposed to set up a film universe, the dark universe for Universal Pictures. Well, and Spielberg also uses his guy ever since Schindler's List to shoot the film because uh, Douglas Slocum has passed on at this point so he used Janusz Kaminski who's a great great cinematographer Re really great I, I mean he's been nominated for Oscars and I think won a couple Oscars uh, has he done every Spielberg movie since like uh, I'll check I think so I know off um, the top of my head he did Saving Private Ryan I remember him being nominated for that forgive him for that uh, let me see um, <laughs> you can't fault the look of Saving Private no, Ryan no 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 uh, yeah, wow, he did uh, Lost World, Jurassic Park, uh, Saving Private Ryan, AI, Minority Report, Catch Me If You Can, The Terminal, War of the Worlds, Munich, uh, Crystal Skull, uh, then he did Funny People. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's right, Apatow used them. War Horse, Lincoln, Bridge of Spies, and then some other things for other people, but 95% of his credits are all Spielberg. Huge. Yeah. Um, now, how did this movie come about, Henry? <laughs> All right, George, I, I don't know, man. Uh, people are clamoring for this uh, this fourth movie, and, uh, I mean, Crusade did really well. People really liked it, but, uh, I don't know, I, I kind of want to get back into it. You know, Ford's on board. He's always wanted to do it. Uh, what do you got? What do you got for me, George? Um, I, I know exactly what to do. Okay. <laughs> I've got one word for you, jo for Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> What's that word, George? Aliens. 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 You want to? Um. Hmm. Uh. W w uh. Is this going to take place on Earth, or does Indy go into space? Oh, I had thought Earth, but do you want to send Indy no, to no, space? No, no, forget I said that. Forget I said that, George. Uh, forget it. it. Earth is better. Earth is better. Uh, uh, how does he, uh, what's he looking for? How does he encounter aliens? I mean, what are we talking about? Um, uh, I have that idea written down somewhere. I don't remember it. But I'm thinking <laughs> that they're interdimensional aliens, not extraterrestrials. Wait, uh, wait, whoa, whoa, what? They're not from outer space. They're from another dimension. Ooh. So, so they're not. But then that—that's not really aliens, right, George? Yeah. Oh. O okay. So, are we dealing with like time travel? Um, uh, wormholes and uh, super string theory. You know, this is remember. Remember, we're we're making an Indiana Jones film, so you don't want to get too too uh, scientific here. Um, do we well, have any earth, do we have any earthbound bad guys in this? Well, or? they're going to be searching for Crystal Skull vodka, Dan Aykroyd's vodka, <laughs> and um, <Yeah>. we've got <laughs> Jesus. And hey, uh, we're going to bring back Karen Allen. Oh well, I like that. Would you, she'll be into that. You, well, we we better utilize her a lot in it. I really really like her to be like a central part of the movie. No, she'll come in like halfway through after Indiana Jones fights a nuclear weapon. You mean he fights people wielding nuclear weapons? No, or... a, a mushroom cloud. How how's he gonna? Uh, okay, uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I guess. Um. <laughs> So who are who are who are? I mean, he's all he obviously has to have an Earthbound adversary. I mean, what time period are we talking here? The fifties, because it'll be just like 
War of the Worlds! <laughs> Alright, I, I kind of just did the alien thing, though. Um, Do it again! <laughs> yeah, uh, okay, I mean, any other ideas for any characters? Uh, any other sidekicks kind of thing going on? His son just... can be in it. Hit, hit, whoa, whoa, wait, <laughs> hit his son? He has a bastard son named Mutt! <laughs> He has a bastard son. I, I'm I'm hoping that it's with with Marion Ravenwood. Yeah, right? yeah. And the son will be. Will he be like taking on the mantle? He's I mean, gonna be the, a real cool greaser. All right. And in in terms of the finale of this whole thing, do you think this will be it? You want to make this the the end the end all of the whole thing? No, I'm open to more. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I might be too. We'll see how this goes. We'll see how it's received by Steven, people. Steven, who then... do you want to cast as the son? Uh, well, I don't think we can get River Phoenix anymore. Um... Steven, don't pretend you're not currently obsessed with a young boy. Um, maybe, uh... Maybe... Topher, Topher Grace? No, Steven, stop playing coy. You're very obsessed with a young boy right now, and you're putting him in everything. Oh, I, I do like Shia LaBeouf. Don't pretend you don't know how to pronounce his name. Shia LaBeouf. Yeah. Yeah, all right, so we'll throw him in there. because he He's a very... nubile young lad. He looks a lot like Harrison Ford, too, so I guess that might work. Steven, yeah. stop being snarky. You're not in character. You sound like a Henry Papali or something. What? <laughs> <laughs> Don't pretend uh, you're I, not actually, obsessed with a young boy right now. I, actually, George, I, I wasn't being snarky. I, I do think he bears a, a strong physical resemblance to Harrison Ford, so I think that would be good. Um, I should know this, George, but I make so many movies. W what movie did I put him in? Um, you happen to be the executive producer of the Transformers franchise, as well as the movie Eagle Eye. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 I need, I'm sorry. You're right, George. I, I was, that's right. right, right. Well, we'll get him. All right. That's fine. That's yeah. Fine. And we'll, we'll try to get a couple of uh, good English actors, too, maybe. I think that would be fun. I've always wanted to work with John Hurt, since it has aliens in it. As long yeah. as we get the janitor from Scrubs, I'm happy. Okay, that sounds good. And scene. Oh, great. great so that's how that. <laughs> I had no idea of Shia LaBeouf connection to Steven Spielberg. He's obsessed with Shia LaBeouf, dude. So funny. And then well, that's why they haven't worked together since. Because when Shia LaBeouf criticized Crystal right. Skull, right. he he like really hurt Steven Spielberg's feelings. I read that Harrison Ford called him a fucking idiot. Yeah, but Harrison Ford took it well. Like, it wasn't like a mean yeah. fucking idiot. Harrison Ford was just like, oh, he's a fucking idiot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's incredible what these Hollywood types, there's such babies, millionaires, famous, Oscar winners, and you can't be honest to them about if they make a movie that sucks. At least he was honest. He Spielberg told him, sometimes you gotta just shut up and sell cars. <laughs> That's Sorry. actually what he said, and and LaBeouf oh. was, was was so upset by that because he thought of Steven Spielberg as his sensei. Oh my god! <laughs> but wasn't the the car sold already? How much? How many <laughs> did, did, did this film make? Yeah. Oh, perfect, huge, perfect tie in. Yeah. Okay. So Crystal Skull was released May twenty second, two thousand and eight. Um, a budget, my friends. <laughs> Of $185 million. Get the fuck out of here. So we yep. have significantly increased in the last 20 years. So Spielberg decided, okay, we got a lot of money. What I'm going to do is have cartoon beavers all over this fucking movie. <laughs> uh, the box office gross was $786.6 million. A gigantic a hit. <laughs> wow. um, it was number three at the box office for 2008 behind The Dark Knight and Iron Man. Wow. Yeah, so it's the highest did, grossing non-superhero movie of 2008. Did either of you guys see it in theaters? I, I did. did. I did. What? I did not either. Oh, you didn't, Dan? I thought you did. No, I watched it on cable. Okay. Yeah. Um, you want to do our 2008 lists? Yeah. 
Yeah, let's do it. Jan, what's your number 10? Uh, you guys are going to love this one. Uh, Slumdog Millionaire. Oh, oh Jesus. Well, Jai Ho! <laughs> <laughs> uh, at least it's number 10. Yeah. yeah. Hank? Uh, my number 10, neither of you have ever seen. Uh, <laughs> one of the best, the only good Philip Roth adaptations, uh, Elegy. Okay. Uh, I have Cloverfield. Yeah, honorable mention for me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Number nine. Uh, Loves with Bashir. Ooh, fucking good movie. It's not nice. on my list. Me neither. Nice, nice one. Yeah. My number nine is In Bruges. Another good one not on my list. Uh, my number nine is Gus Van Sant's Paranoid Park. I, right. I think I started watching that and couldn't get through it. Oh, great. Uh, number eight. Uh, number eight for me, uh, The Dark Knight. I, okay. I like The Dark Knight. All right. Number eight for me was Milk. My number eight is Let the Right One In. All right. Uh-huh. Number seven, Jan. Uh, <laughs> number seven is Step Brothers. Oh, I, I, I love Step Brothers. <laughs> I am in no way arguing with that. No, I love it too. It's not on my list, but it's very funny. Mm. My number seven is Synecdoche, New York. Ah. Mine is Doubt. Uh, honorable mention for me. Mm. Six. Uh, Iron Man. Oh, okay. Hank? Wendy and Lucy. Mm. Mine is Rachel Getting Married. Another honorable hey, mention for me. Mm. Forgot about that one. Yeah, good film. Jo- R.I.P. Jonathan Demi. Yes, yes. Number five. Uh, milk. Okay. Number five for me is probably the only time in the 40 years that we did movies for this uh, that an animated feature made it, and that is Wally. <laughs> Very good. Uh, I have Wendy and Lucy at number five. Okay. Mm-hmm. Number four. In Bruges. Very good. Nice. Number four for me is The Wrestler. My number four is Wally. Okay. Uh, number three for me is The Wrestler. Very good. Hank? Number three for me is Let the Right One In. Very high. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, mine is Synecdoche, New York. All right. We're all on a very similar page. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. On this, on this yeah. Number two. Uh, uh, Wally. Good. <laughs> Hank? My number two is The Dark Knight. Wow, number two. And I am happy with that. Okay. Fucking A. My number two is Milk. All right. And the number one movie of 2008. Two Gus Van Sant movies on my list, by the way. Yeah, yeah. bad. For <laughs> me, uh, not only my favorite year of, uh, my, my favorite film of the year, but it's one of my top ten of the decade, Let the Right One In. Oh, wow. All wow. right. Okay. And my number one movie of 2008, which I am already prepared to take the barrage of fire from oh, you no. two. The Curious Case of Benjamin. <laughs> oh, shit, man. You're not over that. Or, as I call it, Forrest Gump 2. <laughs> <laughs> Henry, I couldn't hear you. You seem to have David Fincher's cock in your mouth. <laughs> Again, Henry? Don't I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Dan. I didn't hear you through the whole top ten list because you had Gus Van Sant's and yours. <laughs> okay. By the way, my, my honorable mention is The House Bunny. That's a fun <laughs> movie. I'm all right with that. Uh, all my, right, n- my number one is The Wrestler. I love that movie. Yeah. All right. Mm. All right. Good list, guys. Great lists. Okay, so Crystal Skull. Let's talk about it. Uh, Hank <laughs> Dan <laughs> So split, We can split it up I don't care I mean what is it Indiana Jones finds himself In the midst of A nuclear test facility <laughs> Right away And uh Well no there's a whole sequence in the warehouse Where we even see the Ark of the Oh Covenant. that's right yeah yeah okay So it's the warehouse from the end of the first movie um, which is oh, wait, one, one quick point. One quick point. I'm going to say this right now. 
I never saw this movie before. Uh, I absolutely did not hate this movie. Uh, wow. That's yep. really surprising. Yep. Well, you're surprised. I was surprised. I, I, I All the shit that I've heard. I'm just, I'm just saying that right now. I, no, I, I will say right now that I really... I like to be a contrarian. So I went into watching this movie... Uh, I had just watched Last Crusade and didn't like it. And so my whole thing was I, I'm i going to rank Crystal Skull ahead of Last Crusade. That's going to be like my big, you know, hot take. Sure, sure. And uh, the more I watched it, this movie is garbage. <laughs> and it's hard to so. it's hard to believe that Steven Spielberg directed it and I'm I want to have the conversation is this the worst movie Steven Spielberg has ever made because absolutely I, not because I think it is and I don't even think it's that much of a conversation I, I need to review the list again but it's right I, now off the top of my head it has to be either that one or War Horse which I hated. Oh, I, I, like, I didn't I see like War Horse, but I mean, to me, in my mind, it's always been either um, fucking The Terminal or 1941, and... Well, I have very strong feelings on Spielberg, so neither of you are going to agree with me, so... What? Uh, th th there's no way this is his worst movie. No fucking way. For well, you, which one is it? I'm looking right now, and I'll tell you what. Uh, I I despise with a passion E.T. I can't what? stand. I can't stand it. I never okay. could. Hank, fuck you. Hold on. Hold I, I don't on. care how much you hate E.T. E.T.'s a much better movie than this. Always yeah. is is yeah. a terrible movie. Always is a terrible movie. Better than. But this. I still like it over. I, I still like it over this one by yep. by a lot actually. Book is. Hook is probably the worst movie he ever made. Hook, Hook is a terrible movie that is insanely more watchable than this movie. No, it's not. I would no way. And and, and um, also, uh, what is it? I just saw it here. Oh, AI. I despise AI. Despise it. Uh, that's so. that's I, I a just, stupid opinion in general. And no, this it's is not. The worst and, movie. Jan, and Jan will agree with me because no. he loves Stanley Kubrick. Okay, listen, I. Like AI until Spielberg does what he does worse or best, which is fuck up the endings with trying to squeeze a happy ending. He does it in every movie. It's not a happy uh, ending. No, she, he he gives him he gives him a chance to be to spend one day with the mom. That kid belonged in the bottom of the sea, praying to that uh, to the fairy godmother to to make him a real boy or whatever. That's where that movie should have ended. That's All it. All right. I'll say this. Uh, the E.T. points that you make, and I can't believe I'm saying this, as a film, personally, I detest that film, but as a film, I suppose you're right, construct in a constructed, the way it's constructed and the script and everything. Uh, if that's just more of a personal hatred of it. I'm sure that you're right. It's a, a better film. I will not budge on Hook. Hook is the worst film he's ever directed that I've seen. Book is pretty bad, yes. But oh, I I, I'll fucking move past Spielberg. I think Jaws the Revenge is better than Indiana Jones and the Kingdom <laughs> of the Crystal Skull. Is that the one at SeaWorld? No, that's Jaws 3. I, I, can't, oh. I can't say this is worse than Jaws 3. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Yeah. Jesus Christ. All right, so go ahead. So do the plot. Oh boy, uh, yeah. So he's bad. He's, uh, he's in that I'll warehouse. All right, thank you. <laughs> he's in a warehouse looking for uh, a crate for the Soviets that contains an extraterrestrial. Uh, the Russians are forcing him to do it. He uh, then escapes in a, in a, I think, a very good scene uh, in the warehouse where he escapes. He uh, then survives a nuclear explosion in a refrigerator. Which, uh, uh, Dan will love this, uh, I guess uh, it was, I don't know if it was Mythbusters, but uh, I thought it was hilarious bullshit too, that 50% of scientists said that that could happen. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> wait, wait a second, that, that fridge flew like two miles. <laughs> two miles. So by the collision, 
itself, it would have killed him. That's what I was thinking when it happened. I was like, wait a second. So he does, okay, so you're giving me the fact that he could survive in a refrigerator, but you're not accounting for the fact that the refrigerator knocked him a million miles. Uh, anyway, the he gets out of the- The fridge goes flying. It bounces like a hundred times, yeah. and, and he just fucking crawls out of there with no problem. It is like more nothing. egregious than anything that has ever happened in a Die Hard movie. It's fucking insane. There's a nuclear explosion! Yeah, and he watches it, too. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so does so does some cartoon beavers. <laughs> I think they're prairie dogs, but I like cartoon. There's beaver a better. lot of reaction shots of cartoon beavers in this scene. They're they're Very they're bad. doing double takes. They're checking out the sitch. Very bad. It's ridiculous. Very bad. Mm-hmm. Um. <clears throat> so, uh, and you, we are introduced to actually one of my one of my favorite actors, Ray Winstone. Uh, but uh, he he's uh, uh, a double agent. We don't know that at first, but it's pretty easy to figure that out from the beginning. Uh, he's a uh, mercenary for the Soviets, just in it for money. And they're basically just trying to find this crystal skull. I'm giving you an abbreviated thing here. He meets his son. Mutt. Because, Mutt. Mutt. Mutt uh, because he uh, is looking for his mother who has been kidnapped, looking for jo- uh, Oxley, the professor who was putting t- connecting the dots for yeah. finding the crystal skull. They go down to Peru. This movie, and get- this movie took place in those two years when Shia LaBeouf was the biggest star in the world. Yeah, well, I, I was going to finish the plot, and then we could talk about Shia, because um, uh, I think Jan has a story, too. But you're too, skipping and I so many amazing things with the plot. Yeah. Oh, well, help me out, help me out. Motherfucker, he meets, he meets Shia LaBeouf in this diner. And yeah, then, well, we were going to get to that. I was giving for the audience an overall, so I can get it out of the way, but, but we, oh, can go as, we can go along. go ahead. No, 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 we'll go along as we go along. Go ahead, I, that's fine with me. He meets Shia LaBeouf in this diner. He doesn't know it's his kid yet. He's just this kid. He's this guy, Mutt, wearing a leather coat. And uh, he's doing his Shia LaBeouf thing. He's like, hey, daddy-o, what's going on? Hey. And uh, fucking uh, all of a sudden in this diner, a fight breaks out between the letter jacket guys and the greasers. Very back to the future. <laughs> it's yeah. fucking ins- It's very American graffiti. And, and Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean... It is one of the weirdest things in the world. At, at, like, there's a there's a close up of a Letterman guy saying, "Get that greaser," and there there's a chase scene, and it, it's you know greasers. Why did it have to be greasers? <laughs> and fucking they they drive on Shia LaBeouf's motorcycle through a library, and they do a slide under a bunch of desks, and then there's a kid, and it's one of. Sh- uh, Indy's students and the kid asks him a question about the test and Indiana Jones answers him it's fucking ridiculous do you know who that student was uh, no one of my favorite human beings on the planet guys oh uh, was he in Gilmore Girls no I'm talking about Chet Hayes Tom Hanks's white rapper son really oh wow good catch yeah oh. that's awesome that's right Tom Hanks has a son Who's a rapper? His Twitter feed is one of the most amazing reads you'll ever find. It is this generation's War and Peace. And I love everything about this man, and it was very exciting for me to see him in this movie. That's the second time his name ever came up on the show. I think it came up in the first or second episode we ever did, and you you educated me on him. So there you go. Look at that. He returns. Yes, Chester Hanks. Um... (laughs) So uh, that was that scene. I mean, come on. We're and at this point, we're like a half hour into this movie, and nothing not ridiculously stupid has happened. Yeah, I would like to point out. I was I was very happy that we learned that uh, Indiana Jones in, in Crusade. I forgot to point it out is a Henry Junior. As am I, guys. Oh, How's that? Good for Isn't you. Isn't that nice? Isn't that good for me? Yeah. Yeah. Indiana Jones, Indy. Yeah, man. There you go. Okay. I understand the excitement of that. There's a character on Buffy named Oz, and then, like, way after the fact, you find out that that's a nickname and his name is actually Daniel, and I remember being very excited. Yeah! (laughs) I was like, wow, I'm a Henry Jr., and I'm named after one of the great characters in cinema. Very cool. All right, anyway. Um, Continuing. We learn that... we We also get a sweet portrait of Sean Connery, uh, which, I mean... 
<laughs> it is so Will Smith and Independence Day Resurgence. I love and it. And Roy Scheider. We we're getting this a lot lately, huh? I know. When actors don't want to come back for movies, we're just getting portraits of them all over the place. <laughs> And we learned that Indiana Jones in the World War II worked for the OSS, the predecessor to the CIA, which was yep. interesting to me. They call him Colonel Jones. Get out kind of here. They do. Yeah, I know. And, and of course, he, he didn't wear a suit to work. He wore a leather jacket and a hat. <laughs> <laughs> and He was a field operative, Dan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Go on. Oh, oh, my turn? Oh, yeah. okay. Uh so they meet up and uh, they go searching to Peru so we can fuck that with that culture. And uh, we end up being in Peru for a long time. Uh, and they find the, I'd say... Yeah, I know, it's just Mayan ruins and pan flutes. That's what they know about <laughs> Peru. Do you ever have naked Indians with paint on their bodies? Absolutely. Here, here they Ab come. Absolutely. And and uh, if, I, if I had thought Karen Allen was wasted in this movie... I would think again, because I'll tell you who's really wasted in this movie, John fucking Hurt. <laughs> no, I mean, you mean... He is zombified. We talked about that a couple weeks ago. He is fucking zombified. What a waste. I, oh, I thought you meant drunk. I, I thought he he's super wasted. Well, probably on set. He was. It's such I, a weird performance. Um, I'm kind of okay with it, to be honest. I I, well, I enjoyed honest, John Hurt in this movie. Yeah, I I think he was the best thing of the movie, and that's <laughs> what when you think that John Hurt. Yeah, he's my LVP. That's crazy because I only had two contenders for MVP, and he's one of them. He was I, my he's my MVP. John wow, Hurt. Wow, interesting, interesting. Well, that just goes to show how much you guys hated the movies. I mean, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking for anything to just entertain me. And yeah. John Hurt is entertaining. I didn't think so. I said I was so bored with this movie rewatching it that I stopped uh, midway through the film because I couldn't stand it, and I continued the next day. Do you know so what movie? Do you know what movie this reminded me the most of of any movie I've ever seen? What? Suicide Squad. Really? Yeah, because you think this is as bad as Suicide Squad? Yes, and they're the That's only crazy. they're the only two movies I can remember where I had to pause the movie like an hour and twenty minutes in because I thought we were getting a like a little subplot or like a side adventure, and it took me a while to realize that no, this is the movie. <laughs> I'm going to go on record. Uh, I like Suicide Squad better than this movie. Okay. And I, I, I can't like quite Suicide. say that, but uh, Not me. on par. I, I, I still wouldn't say that, but uh, it's okay. Okay. What else All you right. got, Hank? Oh, nothing. So they get to Peru. There's a lot of high-speed chases. Uh, Kate Blanchett is the villain. Yeah. Uh, and and I, I, uh, she's not given a lot of depth. She's a cartoon. She's but, wearing uh, a bad wig. She looks like fucking Catherine Zeta-Jones in Chicago. Good call. And, good call. And, but I still liked her because I love her and I, I liked her. I still liked her in it. The same. She's incapable of being bad. I agree with that. Yeah. She's my MVP. <laughs> okay. Um, so they get to the Crystal Skull and uh, it Hang turns on. out... Hang on. Pa you're passing... It's... You're, it's like you have like this blind spot with this movie where everything that's ridiculously stupid you just ignore. No, I don't mean to. that's not intentional. There's just so much happening in it. So go ahead, you just take over. How about the part where Indiana Jones and Karen Allen get stuck in quicksand? Yeah, yeah. All right, so you're you're better at this one. Go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> dry quicksand. And they're just sinking into this quicksand, and it's terrible and they're they're just heads at a certain point and <laughs> and and he needs something to hang on to so mutt shia labeouf goes to grab him some rope but he can't find rope so he grabs a snake snake why did it have to a be snake. snakes and he's afraid of the snake so he needs mutt to call it a rope <laughs> Here, also grab during, onto this rope, wink, wink. Also, during this scene, it's revealed to Indiana Jones that he is Mutt's father as they were sinking 
that's a great way of telling you know, oh by the way that's your kid yeah. <laughs> yeah definitely first of all quicksand what are we doing i know these movies are based on like movie serials or whatever <laughs> right, right, right. but like this movie wasn't made in like 1918 right right yeah it's a real uh real cecil b demille situation yeah uh. <laughs> Uh, I mean, what what do you want to talk about? There's a lot of chase scenes. There's one where Shia LaBeouf is CGI the entire time. You mean the fencing thing? The fencing on top of jeeps? Of yeah. Jeeps through a jump. That is ridiculous. There's one scene where Shia LaBeouf is, like, suspended between two Jeeps. He's got, like, his yep. one leg on either Jeep, and there's a bunch yep. of bushes, and we keep getting, like, CGI Shia LaBeouf getting hit, being hit in his, like, CGI balls by some <laughs> CGI bushes. It's fucking ridiculous. Don't forget the monkeys. monkeys. Yeah, they're don't, CGI don't monkeys. The don't forget the ants. They're CGI ants. Who and George Lucas read once that ants can like, you know, make themselves a tower by like flowing like water, which I've read too, and so that's in this movie. I wish George Lucas would stop reading things. <laughs> what do you mean? That leads to great movies like Red Tails. <laughs> Ooh. Never saw Red Tails. Um, it, I mean, uh no, but also another ridiculous, uh, uh, ridiculous uh, 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 sequence is with the monkeys. I mean, Shia LaBeouf is swinging like Tarzan to catch up with the jeeps that are far up ahead. So he just swings through the jungle like Tarzan and then falls inside one of the jeeps. He catches yeah. up to them and that's, come on, man. What the fuck? Yeah. I mean, and, I, and I forgot about that. Uh, until I rewatch it, and I was like, what the fuck? And then the Jeep turns out to be made of magic and daisies <laughs> because it survives three waterfalls. <laughs> it's the same magic that was uh, made out of the raft. In I know. I, it looked like the raft. I thought of the same, same sequence. Yeah. What was more believable? The raft. Me too. I agree. Yep. I agree. It's three waterfalls. Three. And a tree. And a tree that saves them and slingshots them. Oh, my them. God. The fucking tree. Yeah, it slingshots them. It's it's just like infinite cliffs. There's constant cliffs in this movie. And, I mean, they should be at the center of the earth by now. Fucking. <laughs> and, and they keep saying, watch out, another cliff. Like, it's not that big a deal. <laughs> No, on the third one, they fall. They fall over the... They don't even make, make it down in, in the inside the Jeep. They free fall oh, that's and true. survive. No one, you know, no broken legs, no sprayed ankles, you know. No blood. Nothing like that. No well, blood, no What's, it, what's funny is yeah, I could tell that you guys both have, at this point in the series, are so fed up with it that you're just incredulous at the even at something you probably wouldn't have been incredulous at in the first two bullshit which was, yeah fucking yeah. bullshit uh, 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 no well, yeah Re remember well, wait, i didn't finish my thought oh sorry just, uh, no it's okay i was just gonna say you know at, at, i mean uh, i guess i was just like at a certain point i gave up trying to think that this would hurt, that would hurt, that would kill you. I mean, I, how you were still in that mentality? It's not a matter well, of, of, like, trying to take this too seriously or something, because if a sequence is really cool and fun, you can suspend your disbelief at anything. But, yeah. when, but this wasn't fun or interesting. It was just stupid. Yeah. Yeah, I was okay. going to say that. So remember answer? this? The suspend the, the disbelief part at the beginning. Fuck yeah. that with this movie, man. Yeah. The other, the other three, it was okay. It's impossible what what happens in some of them, but the way that they filmed it, it was still believable. It or acceptable. This I couldn't accept any of it. The uh, the, the swinging through the jungle, the ants, the fi the fencing on the jeeps. The uh, waterfalls, none of it. The none second it. movie, Temple of Doom, is fucking crazy. And right. yet it's yeah. still grounded enough in reality for me to get into it. Yep, I agree. All right, yeah. I agree, too. I just wanted to point that out. Yeah. So 
this Shia LaBeouf thing, Jan, I want to get to this thing. You have a little anecdote. I do. Well, I was <laughs> I was hanging out with my friend Hyde. Oh, he, he used to work on at a restaurant in New York called The Palms, and it's on 50th Street and 8th Avenue. I never hang out on 50th and 8th. You know, why would I? Uh, <laughs> but, but next to the... Uh, to the restaurant, it's this little bar. It's like a fancy bar. It's called Talia's. And, you know, I, 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 I met up with him and we're drinking. And I noticed that there's a lady and she's good looking. She's like in her early 40s. And she's with a guy. It's obvious to me that they're on a date. Uh, but, you know, I don't pay much attention because it has nothing to do with me. So in walks Shia LaBeouf. And it's, it's around that time that he was going crazy. I mean, he's still going crazy, but... <laughs> he was but arrested he was, this week. Exactly. But, you know, he was always wasted, uh, always high, and he walks in, and I, you know, I elbow my friend. It's like, oh, shit, you know, that's Shia LaBeouf. And the guy is, he looks wasted, he looks high, and I'm not judging because I was drinking and I probably smoked before that. So I was probably <laughs> I was probably high as well. But this guy is really beyond fucked up. And if I was an A-lister like he like he was at the time, you know, I wouldn't show myself in public like that. But he walks over to the lady. Remember, the lady is with a guy with a friend or they were on a date and he goes, uh, yeah, hello. Uh, I just want to introduce myself. I'm Shia. Uh, can I talk to you? And the lady just looks at him and is like, yeah, sure. Uh, come with me. So she steps away from the bar, grabs him by the arm, and says in front of everyone, who the fuck you think you are? I'm here with I'm here with someone else, and I know who you are, but do you think that you could just walk into a bar, interrupt my conversation, and try to pick me up, grow up? And then she turned, she turned around, and she went back to her date. And you should have seen his face. He started mumbling um, under his breath. He looks to si side to side, sees that everyone is looking at him, and he turns around and leaves. But it, tells, it, it told me... What a fucking douchebag. I mean, <laughs> I get it. You're an A-lister. You can get pussy. Wow, bravo. But, dude, that's going to extremes. And I was happy that I witnessed that. And I am, uh, I regret that I did not record it. This whole <laughs> conversation that happened you five made a lot feet of away money. from me. Yes, I would have sold it to TMC. Yeah. <laughs> and it happened five feet away from me. It was right there. That's amazing. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. But by now, everyone has a Shia LaBeouf story, so, you know. The Jesus, guys... I, my story was nothing. I just helped. He, he came into the store once and asked uh, Casey and me for movies about Wall Street. And oh, was he doing well, research for Money Never Sleeps? Yep, yep. And, and so Casey and me started showing him all kinds of documentaries on it. And we were uh, hardly starstruck by this fool. But um, once we had given him, like, three or four things... He looked at Casey and I, and he said, "Okay, guys, I'm good. You don't need to baby me." What? Oh, oh, yeah. And I was like, um, "Fuck you." See? Of course, I didn't say that. I walked away humbly and embarrassed. But, <laughs> oh, but he's an asshole. I mean, he's yeah, a, a, a jerk. Yeah. yeah. He got All famous right. too young, too stupid. You know, it's one of those guys. Yeah, for sure. And I, I don't think he's not talented. I no, think I think a, he's a good actor. I think he's a good actor, too. But in this movie, he showed the, uh, I don't know, the uh, the charisma of a, of, a, of a dead fish. I don't know. I, I, I think it's the direction more than anything. He, he seems out of his comfort zone in this movie. I, I like Shia LaBeouf. I, I think I, I've liked him even in the Transformers movies, which are pieces of shit. Yeah, I actually liked him in in Wall Street too. I actually liked him in that. He's good in that. He's good. I mean, look, I I I liked Shia LaBeouf at one point in my life enough that I saw Disturbia and Eagle Eye in theaters. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, that's there's something, but that there's something wrong with you. you know, <laughs> and I still like him. I liked him in that movie Fury. Fury, he was really. Oh good. yeah, that's right. He I was. About that. He was legitimately great in my number four film of last year, American Honey. Oh, I didn't see it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I haven't seen it. 
big recommendation on that one. I, I like Shia LaBeouf, and I look forward to seeing where his career is going. He's just a fucking maniac. Well, when he gets out of jail, he'll be able to resume his career. So Maybe. He's starting to say racist stuff, which uh, doesn't yeah. go Uh-oh. over well in Hollywood. Uh-oh. Yeah. That was about two weeks ago, some shit like that. Yeah. Oh, no. At a cop, right? No, at a bartender. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Not great, not great, not great, Shia. Yeah. Oh man. Um, so right, at the end, got? so at yeah. the end of this movie, uh, they come across some uh, crystallized aliens with smoking eye sockets. So that's great. <laughs> um, and then the aliens all come together and form into one alien, like the fucking Megazord and the Power Rangers, and um, they incinerate Kate Blanchett and fly away to another universe or whatever. And that's the end of the movie. Okay. Oh, and no, no, then uh, and then Shia and Karen Allen get married. And um, oh, wait, what? Say yeah. That again. Oh, I meant Indiana Jones and Karen that, Allen. That, that would have been a movie. <laughs> yeah, that would have been interesting. And then um, the door is left open, and a gust of wind blows Indiana Jones's hat at Shia's feet, and he picks it up like he's ready to take the mantle, almost like he saw the person whose clothes he wants to wear for the rest of his life. <laughs> and uh, But uh, Harrison Ford takes it back, and that's the end of the movie. It ends in a church because uh, yeah. the Indiana Jones movies always have to end with a, a, a gift to God. And he still doesn't believe. <laughs> no. Not in aliens, not in God, not in nothing. Yeah. You just let really, life float by, that Indiana Jones. Really, he should be in the fifth one. Really, he should be like a minister or something by this point. I mean, yeah, but no, by this point, he should be like a fucking maniac like Woody Harrelson in 2012 or something. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's lost it after all the shit he's seen. Who wouldn't? Yeah, uh, yeah. it's crazy. So um, right now on the schedule uh, is July tenth, two thousand twenty, is the next Indiana Jones movie. Yeah, and Spielberg's attached to direct, but you never know with him. He kind of does what he wants. Um, last year he wanted to do the BFG for some reason. Um, <laughs> but I, I know his next, what he's doing that, the Pentagon Papers movie with Tom Hanks and Meryl Streep. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's his next one. And then he's doing an adaptation of that book, Ready Player One. And I think after that, he, he's doing a fucking Indiana Jones movie. With the same screenwriter, right? Because he did such a great job on this one that they rewarded him with an, with another one. Well, he ju- he just works with the same guys now. Like, if you look at at Steven Spielberg's movies, literally in like the last twenty years, you'll only see like three or four screenwriters attached. It's like he gets the idea, like I want to make this movie an adaptation or a war movie or a biopic of Lincoln, and he just, d- d- no matter what, like the writer's strength, he hires the same fucking four guys. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. It's too bad because, you know, uh, usually even a great director like that, sometimes they'll get somebody who might have specialized more in the topic they're covering. But no, the, no, it's it's. I'm telling you, it's it's, you know, David Kep, Jeff Nathanson, yeah, Jeb Stewart, John Logan. That's who he works with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, you're right. Yeah. Will you be looking forward, either of you, to the fifth one? Fuck no. <laughs> I'm, I'm that, looking forward to how they're going to write out Shia LaBeouf. Well, that, that, I, I was about to say that. How, how do you fix that problem? How, because it didn't work. The guy doesn't have right now the, the, the charisma to carry a franchise. And do you kill him off? I mean, Spielberg hates Shia LaBeouf, like in real life. They, they, they don't do get along anymore. Do you replace the actor? Do you kill off the character? I mean... How are they going to solve that? Oh, problem? they'll just they'll just write him into saying that he doesn't get along with his father and they don't speak anymore. You know what That's they could what do is. that they've done before? What? Have the movie take place a year earlier for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> there yeah. you go. You just solved it. Yeah. yeah. 1951. There you go. Boom. Yeah. 
and make Harrison Ford even keep him the same age. Uh, you know, he's going to be 76 or something when they get around to it. But uh, no, he'll be 78 when that comes out. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. An 80 year old Indiana Jones. That's what the people want. Uh, apparently, I mean, seven hundred million in in ticket sales. That's outrageous. But everyone hated this movie. Well, that's not nope. entirely true because I, I'm looking at. It's interesting because it it it's pretty polarized. You're looking you got, at critics. You're not looking at audiences. Right, audiences right, right. hated right. this. But Roger Ebert, granted, he probably was seen out at the time, and you know, uh, uh, he died soon after. Uh, well, but five years some, later, but yeah. Oh, that's soonish. Come on. Yeah. Uh, 3.5 stars out of four. Leonard gave, Walton, three and a half out of four. Listen, <laughs> Roger Ebert at that point, he gave the movie knowing four stars. With you, have said that, you have said that on this show like 10, ten I times. I know, but I think it says something. I mean, the guy was just happy to be out in the world watching yeah. something. He yeah. didn't have a fucking jaw when he saw this movie. Right. <laughs> What's the rotten? T- what what is the audience like aggregate on this? I think it's like seventy eight percent. No, Ooh. there's no way it's that high. I'm looking right now. Then please I'm do. Eighty eight percent. No, <laughs> I've got it here. It's seventy seven percent. What I'm, what am I looking at? It says eighty eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Well, that's insane. Eighty eighty eight. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's Last Crusade. My fault. Uh, okay. My fault. Um. Wow, so 76, that's still not as bad as I thought it would be. Okay, but I'm looking at Cinema Score, where they, they conduct the surveys with audiences, and it has a B, which doesn't seem that low, but when you look at Cinema Score, fucking everything has an A. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know that. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, I got it here, 77. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean the, the, this movie's so bad, it's not only the outrageous shit that happens... Uh, throughout the film in terms of action, uh, but the storyline. He finds out that he has a kid that it w- was kept from him for 20 years, and he's not even angry. Not phased. Not phased <laughs> by it at all. <laughs> the kid is not angry at the mom, and they start making jokes about they fall, they, they re-fall in love in, in between the quicksand and the... Uh, and the kingdom of the crystal, whatever, they <laughs> re fall in love. They rekindle the romance while they're, you know, falling through waterfalls. Yeah. And no <laughs> one is angry. It's I mean, how, how much of a piece of shit Indiana Jones was as a person that Marion kept, uh, kept that, this, secret, this, this secret for 20 years and it's never explained. There, oh, there is yeah. no conflict in this movie. They're just an adventuring squad right away. It'd be like if a romantic comedy, the, the couple had like their meet cute, and then they dated, and then the movie ended. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's outrageous in every which way. It's one of the worst films I've seen in a long time. All right. What are we grading this? I'm, nice. giving, it, I'm giving it two. I thought you were gonna give it a fucking three. No, the way you're talking about this thing. No, because no, I'm just being. A, I'm trying to be somewhat of a devil's advocate, but uh, no, it's it's a two star movie. It, I, I don't think it's a one because it it did have entertaining spots in it, uh, uh, and I liked Kate Blanchett. Uh, and and also, I have to say, I think the reason also is because. Unlike you two, I had never seen it. All I've ever heard was nasty things, and so <laughs> most of them were confirmed, obviously. But I just didn't think it was... I was. I guess it wasn't nearly as horrific as I thought it was going to be. It's not good. It's, it's bad. I'm giving it two stars. I'm giving but, it a one. It is Spielberg's worst movie. I think it's the only Spielberg movie I'd give a one to. There's a bunch that would get a two, but... <laughs> I me. mean, this was a... POS. Just... Can I give it? Can I give it half a star? No, no, sorry. <laughs> no, one, one is our lowest rating. So I, I guess that it would be one, but th- th- to me, that's it. Doesn't deserve a one. Th- this movie really, <laughs> this, this movie really pissed me off, put me in a bad mood. It was like, oh, come on, man. And I loved Indiana Jones. I grew up with him. You know, this is I'm a child of the '80s. I remember watching. Uh, 
Temple of Doom in the movie theater. I remember watching Raiders on my uh, on my beta tape, uh, <laughs> and you know it was. And, and I and I and I watched this movie. I saw it in the in the movie uh, theater here in New York. Yeah. So I paid what twelve dollars to see this piece of shit. <laughs> At I'm not least. gonna get. I'm not gonna get that back. They're gonna give it to me back. Uh, no. Yeah, yeah. MVP, LVP. Uh, MVP. John Hurt. right? I'll go with John Hurt. Yeah, I concur. John Hurt. I go Kate Blanchett. John Hurt's my LVP. Although it could probably easily be Spielberg or Lucas, but uh, and your guys' LVPs. Spielberg. I got I mean, I, it's it's Spielberg to me. I I mean, because as bad as the idea is for the movie, I mean, it works on no levels whatsoever. But I I mean, th it looks like shit, which you don't expect from a Spielberg <laughs> movie. It looks well, like fucking garbage. They try to excuse that by saying, "Well, we were going for an homage on B movies, sci-fi B movies." Why would you do that? Why is that a choice that you make? In an established franchise. But yeah. that's a garbage um, excuse because exactly. if they wanted to do that, then there'd be like shitty models in this movie, but it's all <laughs> shitty CGI. It, yeah. There are so many bad visual effects. You'll notice, I mean, this movie didn't come close to being nominated for visual effects. It looks, <laughs> I mean, think about how this movie looks. The fucking CGI beavers, the fallen, the, the CGI Shia LaBeouf between the two Jeeps. Think about how this movie looks, and it came out the same year as Iron Man. Yeah, yeah good point. And and it cost a hundred eighty-five million to make. That's outrageous money, and that's the best that you can do with that money. Yeah, yeah good point. Well, I got a superhero count. I got to run through. All right, um, uh, uh, very quickly, I'll say my, my fun franchise crossover. Neil Flynn uh, from Scrubs showed up as an FBI agent in an early oh, scene. He's and in my superhero count. Oh, really? Because yeah, we he popped up. Remember, as a cop who had like one line in The Fugitive. That's right. Yeah. Okay, well, then we'll start with him. Okay. Uh, he was in Smallville, playing <laughs> Pete Dinsmore. Okay. <clears throat> Ernie Reyes Jr., who we covered when we did Rush Hour. Yes, he uh, was a temple guard in this movie. He had no yeah. lines. He was just, like, doing stunt work. And right. uh, he was um, one of... He was, like, the main, like, human character in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Ooze. Good call. And he was also in Red, Red Sonja. Oh, God, <laughs> Red Sonja. Never goes away. Yeah. The, the uh, General Ross, the guy who defends Indiana Jones in the retarded interrogation scene uh, when they think he's a Soviet spy. Alan Dale, he was in Captain America Winter Soldier playing a councilman. Alan Dale, an actor that I love. Um, mm. He was Caleb Nickel on The O.C. And... <laughs> um, and TV fans mostly know him as Charles Widmore, uh, one of the big villainous characters on Lost. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, the other FBI agent in that scene was a, an actor named Joel Stauffer, and he is currently in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. as the silhouetted man. That's uh, one of the Inhumans. Oh, all right. All right. Yeah. I got to bone up on my comics there. Sure. Uh, then the three biggies. Um, Jim Broadbent... This was my favorite one. Um, he yeah, was what was he doing in this fucking movie? <laughs> I don't know, man, because I love him. Yeah. I don't know. He was in Superman 4, uh, The Quest for Peace. <laughs> yeah? I don't remember that. <laughs> no, uh, he played one of the villains that's conspiring with Lex Luthor in the beginning. Oh, I think we did talk about it. We and, might have, yeah. Every time Jim Broadbent is in anything like this, I'm just like, go find Mike Lee. See what exactly, he's up to. Exactly, right, right, right. <laughs> He was also in a BBC short parody called Spider Plant Man. Jesus he, Christ, you didn't have to mention that. He played <laughs> Batman. All hey, right. man, you know me. I dig deep. You All know right. that. And the last two final ones, we cover, uh, We did this when we did Alien, but John Hurt was in, I think, all of the Hellboy movies. Yeah, he uh, was good in those. Yep. Yeah. And Kate Blanchett, soon to be in Thor Ragnarok. Who's she playing? Ayla. Oh, yeah, she'll be good. Um. Yeah. All right. Uh, so that that's that's it, guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um. Jan, you got anything you want to plug? Well, yeah. Uh, on a personal note, uh, 
next week, next Friday, July 21st. Oh, well, two things happened that day. One, can I say this, Henry? Yes. It's my good friend's uh, Henry Papali's birthday. Oh, uh, thanks, happy man. Birthday, happy birthday in advance. But also, uh, my wife is Melissa Falkenham, and she's beautiful, she's brilliant, and she's very patient because she puts up with me, and that's a lot, <laughs> as, as Henry, Henry should know. And <laughs> we are celebrating our fifth year anniversary of being married, the best decision I've ever made. I can't believe that I pull it off, uh, and I love her, and I miss her because I haven't seen her in about two weeks. Congratulations, my friend. Thank you, and thank you guys for, ha for having me here. Uh, it was a blast. Oh, it was great, man, and we hope you come back.